it's that time of the summer. You know, girls have their time of the month. We have our time of the summer, and that is to talk about your idiot league mates. Today, we are going over six players that you need to let your idiot league mates draft in fantasy football this year. And I can't think of a better player to start off with than the same player we started this series off with during draft season, during dynasty season, during rookie season. And it is none other than Xavier Worthy of the Kansas City Chiefs. Your idiot league mates are going to draft him because the man ran the fastest 40 yard dash time ever recorded at the combine with a 4 2 1. That is predictable for fantasy football, right? Let's take a look at the fastest 40 yard dash times by wide receivers ever. It's Xavier Worthy. Then it's John Ross, Rondell Menides. Uh, it's probably an apostrophe somewhere in there. Uh, Jerome Mathis, Marquise Goodwin, and Henry Ruggs. Hashtag predictive analytics. Uh, here's what's going to happen throughout the summer, and it's already starting to happen, which is why I feel even better about putting Xavier Worthy at the top of this list because his ADP is continuing to soar up draft boards. Your league mates are going to continue to see clips on Twitter of Xavier Worthy catching deep balls from Patrick Mahomes at OTAs and at training camp. Of course, someone who runs a 4 2 40 yard dash is going to look tremendous in shorts without pads. He is a gym class hero. That is what happens. But do not forget, Xavier Worthy is 165 pounds. Three years ago, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Three years ago, we were debating whether or not Devontae Smith, it, it could be possible that he could be good at football because of his size. Devontae Smith is both heavier and taller than Xavier Worthy is. Xavier Worthy gets ragdolled at the line of scrimmage. His success rate versus press coverage is it's brutal, okay? And when we start to look at the rest of the Chiefs' offense, they bring in Hollywood Brown this offseason, right? And Hollywood Brown is a more well-rounded, more seasoned version of what Xavier Worthy is right now. They bring back Miko Hardman. I don't want to be annoying, but like Miko Hardman is annoying, all right? And he's gonna he's gonna be annoying in fantasy football sometimes. They have Travis Kelsey, obviously. He's coming off of a down year, but even in a down year, he was the tight end one in fantasy points per game at the position. Okay. Uh Rashi Rice, I don't know what's going on with him. Apparently he is ripping up camp right now. Um, and I've heard anywhere from like he's gonna get eight game suspension this season to the complete suspension is gonna be pushed off until next year. If you have those three guys on the field. If you have Hollywood, if you have Kelsey, if you have Rashi Rice, Xavier Worthy becomes the fifth offensive weapon on this team, okay, behind Pacheco. Like, he's going to make highlight plays once every three games and wind up with, like, 600, 650 yards as a rookie, which is why I love this line right now on underdog. They have him at 800.5 receiving yards. I literally think that is free money. I think that is money that's going straight into your bank account the day that the regular season ends. So if you want to go make some money, go over to Underdog Fantasy right now, download the app, use promo code BDGE when you do so, and they're going to give you a bunch of bonus deposit money on there. And they're also going to give you an actual free square of 0.5 yards by, I believe, Patrick Mahomes when you get on there. So as long as he throws one single yard in week one, you win. You could pair it with the lower on Xavier Worthy receiving yards. Listen, Xavier Worthy might end up being a good player at the NFL uh, level, right? He has Andy Reid, who's going to use a lot of pre-snap motion and, and use him in creative ways. Statistically, he's not going to get there as a rookie, okay? So let the highlight the highlight clips continue to pour out from training camp as he's playing in shorts without pads and no one's pressing him at the line of scrimmage. Let those continue to boost up his ADP. Let someone else in your league draft him. Let's move to the second player on this list. Let's get, let's get a little spicier here, okay? You know, this list, I could just simply list off bad players for you. I can list off a bunch of players that no one was really going to draft anyways. But sometimes we got to take our stand. Sometimes we've got to go against players that have huge quad muscles. I don't know why we have to do it, but I'm doing it. And it's Saquon Barkley, okay? He goes over to Philly and on most regular sites, you know, the ESPNs, the Yahoos, those types of sites where they're not like wide receiver crazy on underdog Saquon's a second round pick. But on the other sites, Saquon is pretty objectively a top 10 pick this year in fantasy football. And I'm here to tell you to let your idiot league mates draft Saquon Barkley in the first round. He moves over to Philly, which on paper, it's a, a million times better of a situation for a running back, okay? Someone in your league is going to put two and two together and just say, of course, he's a great pick, right? The math just, it maths. I would argue at this point in his career, Saquon Bar Barkley, uh, I'm going to argue this from a few different angles, but one of the first things that pops out to me when I watch him, I just don't think he's the same player he was when he came into the league. And I put together some numbers for you. You'll see all the way on the right there, his rookie season, just yards after contact per attempt, broken tackles plus missed tackles forced per attempt, just his overall elusiveness grade and his 40 plus yard rushing 
touchdowns, right? I tried to find numbers that were kind of exclusive to his play and not so much his offensive line play because obviously the the huge gap here is the Giants offense and their offensive line stinks. Philly's offense and Philly's offensive line does not stink. But these are numbers for the most part that are like running back exclusive. If you are good by yourself, you could just see like his grades, his rates, everything is just significantly higher when he came in the league as a rookie. I don't think he's as elusive. I don't think he's as explosive. I don't think he's as powerful anymore. And that stuff starts to add up. That starts starts to happen after you tear your ACL and you suffer these high ankle sprains. Like the scar tissues start to pile on. And when you're 27, going to be 28 at the end of this year, like those things eventually add up and you lose a little bit of the explosiveness. And then You know, when you look at Philly, I love their offense. I love their passing offense specifically this year. They do lose Jason Kelsey, who has been, you know, the best uh, center, one of the best centers of all time. And that's going to hurt their run game for sure. Uh, They also have not had like when you look at Jalen Hurts, the, the other two glaring holes as it relates to Saquon Barkley and fantasy are touchdowns on the goal line and then pass catching work, right? Like Jalen Hurts is a mobile quarterback. These athletic quarterbacks tend to take off and run rather than trying to dump it off to the players around them. That's just the type of athletic build they have. Under Hurts, he's been a starter for three years. They have not had a running back catch 40 passes. No running back has hit 40 receptions under Jalen Hurts, all right? And there's also no guarantee. Like Kenny Gainwell has been the permanent two and four minute drill back in Philadelphia since he has come into the league. So while Kenny Gainwell is not good, he's not a better runner, he's not more explosive, he's not really better at anything. He's a great pass catcher. He actually, but Saquon is obviously elite in that. They use Kenny Gainwell in those situations because he's small, he's able to squeak out, he's able to catch those like quick little hitters and, and, and you know, uh, wiggle a little bit for some extra yards. So Kenny Gainwell has been the two and four minute drill back. That being said, they gave Saquon a lot of money. So like maybe he takes that role, but uh, they're going to have to use a breather back every now and then this would be the time to do it because they've clearly shown that Kenny Gainwell has been a part of this particular part of their offense, which is where a lot of targets happen and a lot of pass catching happens and a lot of fantasy points happen in a very small window of time. On the goal line, the obvious thing here is the tush push. Uh, Some people think it might be going away because Jason Kelsey's not there anymore. I was listening to Establish the Runs podcast this morning of uh, 14 offensive line moves that you need to know about. And they talked about Jason Kelsey retiring and Evan Silva texted someone in the Eagles organization or someone someone in the NFL that like knows the Eagles organization very well and asked about the tush push. And the guy was like, there's no way it's going away. He said uh, there's they're practicing it. They're they're not moving off of the tush push whatsoever. So if there's any concerns about it, uh, we have the NFL people, the inside sources saying that it is not going anywhere. And when you look at just the sheer amount of volume that Jalen Hurts gets on the goal line, it's like they have had 96 goal line carries since he has been the starter in 2021. He has had 48 of them. He has exa- He's had exactly 50% of the goal line carries in Philadelphia. OK, those numbers have, you know, that's even skewed towards a lower number back in 2021, 22 and 23. They've gone up and up and up. That means the other 50 percent are split amongst other running backs, not just one running back getting all of them. But like Boston Scott gets got got some Kenny Gainwell got some. They drafted Will Shipley. Like if Saquon's not getting 100 percent of the running back goal line carries and he's he's getting a, a relatively low volume of goal line carries to begin with. So all this to say, I have a lot of concerns with Saquon, him as the player. The situation, I think, is a little bit worse for fantasy running backs on paper. All these concerns are for his ceiling, not his floor, okay? I think he'll be a fine pick. Like, he'll be a fine fantasy player. I don't see him finishing outside of, like, the top, you know, 13, 14 running backs, probably even, like, 12. He'll probably be a low-end RB1. But if you're drafting him with, like, the 10th overall pick in your draft, I think you're going to be really disappointed because you are looking for dudes with crazy ceilings. And I get that it's easy to just say that. It's like Saquon, Philadelphia, of course, big ceiling. I think when you really start to look at the actual situation, it starts to – bring you back down to earth a little bit. Here's another player I want to bring back down to earth. And I've talked about him quite a bit because the narrative is extremely strong this offseason. It's Justin Herbert, the quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, most of the people have started to really come around to the fact that he should be getting drafted later and later in fantasy drafts. And in like home leagues, he's the quarterback 13, 14. There are still a ton of guys that are going after him. The Trevor Lawrence's, even like the Matt Stafford's that I would take in a pass heavy offense over Justin Herbert. Because if you're new and you're tuning back into football content right now, Justin Herbert and the Chargers, big shift this offseason. They bring in Harbaugh from Michigan. They bring in Greg Roman, both dudes who want to play defense, both both dudes who want to run the ball a shit ton. They let go of Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, Gerald Everett in favor of 
you know, bringing back Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. They are they are taking one step back to take two steps forward in the future. But I don't want to be investing into the into the part of the offense that's taking the one step back right now. Okay, they have no real pass catching weapons on the outside. I like Josh Palmer. I think he's a great value, but he's not going to be a needle mover for Justin Herbert. Their biggest free agent move was bringing in Will Disley because their tight ends were so bad at blocking in the run game last year. They had the number five overall pick in the NFL draft this year. Instead of taking a Malik Neighbors or Rome to pair with Justin Herbert, they took Joe Alt, who is a run-blocking dynamo. And Herbert, I know everybody loves to just say how he's like an elite quarterback and like his traits are unrivaled by other players. Here's the thing. He has now had back-to-back finishes in fantasy points per game outside of the top 12 quarterbacks. He has not been a points-per-game QB inside the top 12 for fantasy in each of the last two years. And as far as statistical ceiling is concerned, his situation got drastically worse going into 2024 because this offense is clearly going to be a lot more run heavy. And they lost all of the weapons that he has gained chemistry with over the last three, four years of being an NFL QB. So while Herbert, his his draft spot to me is not a, a value where his ADP is. It's just simply correct. And a lot of people will just see the name and be like, it's Justin Herbert. Of course, he's going to fucking throw up numbers. I just don't think he is. On underdog right now, his passing line is 3,600 yards. This is a dude who a few years ago threw for over 5,000. If Vegas is telling you that that's what this situation is going to be, maybe you should fucking listen. Okay? And if you want to listen to more of the takes that we have here, if you want to get all of our rankings, if you want to get all of our complete fade lists, we'll be doing a lot more videos like this throughout uh, the summer on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed. But we also have our draft guide launching, I think about a week from today on August 1st. And the least expensive way to get it is by going on underdogfantasy.com or downloading the app using, as I've already said, promo code BGE. Not only are you going to get these beautiful lines, not only are you going to get a free square of 0.5 passing yards for Patrick Mahomes in week one, but you're getting our draft guide absolutely free when you deposit $10 or more. All right. So they've got this entire value bucket of all these things that you're getting. But most importantly, you'll get the BDG draft guide absolutely free if it is your first time depositing. If you've already been on underdog or if you're in a state that does not allow it, you can get the draft guide right now for a discounted price on bdge.co until August 1st, then it will be full price. But up until then, discounted pre-order price, bdge.co, least expensive way, underdogfantasy.com, the least expensive way to draft a good team in fantasy football this year is by not taking Sam Laporta in the second and or third round, okay? Where he is going in drafts is fucking crazy right now. And I get it. He's coming off of a fucking crazy rookie season, Dynamite, catching passes, catching touchdowns, doing it all for the Detroit Lions. Early second round pick came right into his own. You never really see it from a rookie, from a a, a rookie tight end. My problem with Sam Laporta is there's just no reason that he should be going a round ahead of Travis Kelsey, a round and a half, two rounds ahead of Trey McBride and Dalton Kincaid and Mark Andrews. I feel if you ask me my confidence level that he is going to finish with more fantasy points than Travis Kelsey, I would. I, I don't have. Z- I have zero confidence in that. I have. I personally, again, if you want my rankings, they're in the draft guide. I will have Trey McBride as my number one tight end in fantasy football this upcoming season. If you look at his numbers over the second half of last year, once he once Zach Ertz got hurt in week seven and didn't play again, Trey McBride took over and his point per game number would have been tight end one in fantasy football last year. Okay. I don't have conf- I don't have a two round discount confidence level that Sam Laporta is that much better than Trey McBride or Mark Andrews or Dalton Kincaid. Like there is just no chance that I'm taking Sam Laporta at his current ADP. On ESPN, he is the 24th player off the board, which is at the end of the second round. In FFPC leagues, where that is tight end premium, he is the 15th player off the board. In best ball tens, which is also another paid league, he's the 24th player off the board. NFL and Yahoo have him 26th overall, which is the 302 in 12 man leagues. All right, so we're talking premium, premium draft capital, and you could legit, legitimately get Trey McBride two, two and a half rounds later. And I'm just not doing it. That is just crazy to me. Sam Laporta will be good. Sam Laporta might even be great, but he's not great enough to warrant the the gap in where you have to draft him relative to all the other great options at tight end. Player number five on this list is Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. And I wasn't really sure how how I thought about Calvin Ridley, how I thought about this 
this passing offense overall until I started doing a lot more deep work and, and research for the draft guide where we have, you know, little player blurbs available for every single player that's fantasy relevant. And as I'm doing research for Tennessee, the situation this year is this, right? They get rid of Rabel. They get rid of Derrick Henry. They bring in Brian Callahan. Brian Callahan was the OC for Cincinnati. He is now their head coach. And Cincinnati ran very, very high rates of three wide receiver sets, where Tennessee almost never ran them last year. So the offensive philosophy is going to be way different. Now, my problem with where Calvin Ridley is going is he's a fifth round pick right now. He is getting picked a full round, if not a round and a half, before DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins has a full year of chemistry with Will Levis already. So, again, I don't feel confident that Calvin Ridley is going to come in there come in there and demand more targets than DeAndre Hopkins is. The other thing to, like, underratedly note here is Brian Callahan, former OC for Cincinnati, also went out and one of their first free agent signings was Tyler Boyd, the slot wide receiver, the underrated slot wide receiver of the last half decade for Cincinnati is now the starting slot wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. He's not going to be the wide receiver one or two here, but he will quietly vacuum up, you know, 70, 75, maybe a little bit more than that number of targets. And that's going to be a problem for everyone in this passing game, not to mention that they have all of these weapons to throw to on top of two, you know, above average at worst pass catching running backs, Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard. So uh, I like the idea of this being an up tempo, a spread offense, a lot of weapons. We have no idea how, how, if Will Levis is going to be any good. He had that huge game, which kind of like anchored in our mind about him and his ceiling on a week to week basis. But most metrics from last year with Will Levis under center have been bad. So if he just right, right there, I think you start with that outlook is saying Will Levis. 50% chance he's good, 50% chance he is bad. So right now you're kind of like already investing into a receiving group that you have a coin flip of whether or not their quarterback is good. If he's bad, then everybody in this offense is going to likely end up being a bad pick in terms of pass catching stuff. Okay. So I think you start there and then you start to look at the other red flags with D hop already being there and Tyler Boyd being there and these pass catching running backs. So like I think there's just a lot of lot going on there, right? It's like trying to predict the Seahawks receiving group. It's like trying to predict any of these packed out offensive groups with any sort of confidence. And I can't do that. So I am not trying to predict one guy to get picked two, three rounds ahead of the other guy that I feel like might have just as good of a chance of being the wide receiver one there. And the last player up on this list to round it out. And again, if you've enjoyed the video so far, let me know if you want me to continue doing videos like this, I had a, a, a an idea or a thought for a series where what I wanted to do, because we reference underdog fantasy a lot, and I know a lot of you guys uh, play on there, but a lot of you guys do your home leagues with people that draft on ESPN, Yahoo, CBS, etc. And the ADPs are very different. So sometimes we'll be talking about this guy as a fourth round pick, but he's like a seventh round pick on ESPN. So what I wanted to do was a series going round by round or position by position, talking about the widest gaps in paid formats or paid uh, platforms versus the home league platforms and basically signifying like guys that you're going to have to jump over your league mates for or guys that you can wait on and just kind of let your league mates draft based on like ADP from paid leagues because the paid league ADPs are a lot sharper. Uh, the paid league ADPs are there because people are staying on top of all the news all offseason, whether it's injuries, depth charts, all that kind of stuff. So uh, in my opinion, the single best way to prepare for your drafts is by doing best ball drafts on underdog fantasy. And again, if you download deposit with 10 bucks, promo code BDGE, they're going to hit you with a bunch of deposit matches on top of that. Okay. So I want to do that series. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. I know a lot of my audience also drafts on those like lesser sharp platforms. And I think there's a lot of ADP to take advantage of one of the guys being Nick Chubb and letting your idiot league mates draft Nick Chubb because he's Nick Chubb and Nick Chubb is his name and we love Nick Chubb and he's a great player and he has been a great player, but he will no longer be a great player for the Cleveland Browns or for your fantasy team because he is coming back from a tear of his knee that was uh, a monstrosity. It was not just the ACL. It was not a clean tear. It was multi ligaments, which what that means, right? I'm only technically a doctor, but what that means is whatever the timetable is, you push it back significantly because they need to let the swelling go down of ligament number one in order to get in there, repair it, let it recover, then go in for the ACL tear. So having multiple ligaments means a much longer timetable and a much longer recovery timetable as well. So Nick Chubb is also, he's old. He's 29 years old. This is his second major multi-ligament knee injury dating back to 2015 when he was at Georgia. So 
being this old, having that type of uh, ligament tear is a problem for Nick Chubb. And it's going to be a problem for his recovery. And I would be shocked if he is relevant whatsoever in fantasy over the first half of the season. And it would not surprise me if he just does not become relevant really at any point uh, in the fantasy season next year. So the injury, I don't care that he is squatting you know, a fuck ton of weight is pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's pretty, it, it is actually, you know, kind of fucking sick, but it doesn't matter. These tears, the reason that they are detrimental is because you can't shift from side to side. The tear of the ACL is a problem for running backs because they don't have the explosive lateral agility. Just going up and down is not going to be a problem. Nick Chubb's eventually going to start jogging on the field and running on the field. Everyone's going to be like, he's back, baby. No, ACL tears don't kill you. They don't paralyze you, okay? They just zap your lateral agility side to side. So this is going to be a big problem for Nick Chubb. Do not draft him based off the name value. I would just stay away altogether. Injury optimism is the key killer of most fantasy football drafters, okay? These six players will be the key killers for your fantasy team this year. Six players let your idiot Lee mates draft. Let me know who you've got down below. Who are some dudes that you are staying away from like thy plague? That's all I got for you today. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And make sure you go check out the draft guide, bdge.co. Discounted price until August 1st. But the cheapest way to get it is on underdogfantasy.com using code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. I'll see you all tomorrow. Smooches.